All right, now that I got to celebrate uh, Columbus Day by going to my neighbor's house and claiming it as my own, I'm back in Room 101. I've got some notes handy to keep me on task, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about faults. And for faults, I want to start with some uh, earthquake terminology that's often misused, and that being the difference between the focus and the epicenter of an earthquake. Um, the focus is the point underneath the ground where rock under stress actually breaks, and this is the point where uh, that causes the earthquake. The point directly above the focus on Earth's surface is called the epicenter. Um, and quite often you'll hear in the media, they'll talk about the depth of an earthquake it being so many meters or so many feet below the Earth's center, um, the Earth's surface, and they'll say, oh, the epicenter was so many meters deep, and that's just wrong. The epicenter is always the point on the surface. The focus is where it actually occurs underneath Earth's surface. My pointer's going crazy already. All right. Next, we're going to talk about magnitude. Uh, the only scale we use for magnitude in this course is the Richter scale, um, named after, I believe, it was Charles Richter. If not, that's good enough. We'll call him Charles. Um, but the Richter scale is a logarithmic scale, and you can get an idea by looking at here, you know, how strong each of these, uh, each of these magnitudes of earthquake would be. Uh, but keep in mind, this is a logarithmic scale. So to put that in simplest terms, um, a value increase on the Richter scale means that the earthquake's magnitude increases by a scale of 10 for each unit of increase. Um, and that didn't sound right coming out of my mouth, so let me give you an example. Um, a magnitude 7 earthquake is going to be 10 times stronger than a magnitude 6 earthquake. And a magnitude 7 earthquake would be 1,000 times stronger than a magnitude 4 or 10 times 10 times 10. So for each number we go up on the Richter scale, uh, the magnitude of the earthquake increases by a factor of 10. So let's start by talking about stress um, or forces applied to rock. And uh, there's three that we want to talk about. First one is compression, right here. So we have forces squeezing it, the rock together. Tension is when they're pulled apart in opposite directions. And then shearing is when they're pushed in opposite horizontal directions. So stress results in movement along faults. So before we talk about faults, let's uh, look at a couple of terms here. And this fault doesn't seem to be moving. That's a shame. Oh, well. Um, first, fracture is a break in rock caused by stress. A fault is movement along that break. And there's two important terms here that you need to understand so that these definitions will make more sense, and that's the hanging wall and the foot wall. Um, the hanging wall is above the fault plane, this being the fault plane right here, and the foot wall is below it. And sometimes they look side by side, so it's kind of hard to understand. So a good way that I remember this is if I were here on the surface of the earth and I were about to walk down this fault, if that were possible, my feet would be on the foot wall, and the hanging wall would be above my head. So let's take a look at the four types of faults. Um, the first one is a normal fault, and it's just going to keep moving over and over, so hopefully that doesn't freak you out too much. Um, normal faults are caused by tension or pulling apart. So along this fault, these two blocks would be pulled apart, the hanging wall and the foot wall, and in this case, the hanging wall moves down. So normal fault caused by tension, hanging wall moves down. A reverse fault, well, it's reverse, so if uh, normal was tension, reverse would be compression and the hanging wall would move up. A thrust fault is like a crazy reverse fault, also caused by tension, but you can see that the hanging wall kind of just plows over the foot wall. Um, these are wildly exaggerated. In reality, you'd get something more like what's over here on the right. And then the last kind of fault is the strike slip or lateral fault, and this is caused by shearing. Um, we can have either left lateral or right lateral faults, and uh, the easiest way to remember this is by looking at what way does it look like that fault is moving. So if, let's say, Reese Witherspoon is standing here, and I'm standing over here, and she's looking at me, I'm moving to her left. Likewise, if I'm looking at Reese Witherspoon, she's moving to my left if I'm standing here, and she's here. And this, so that's one's going to be called a left lateral fault. In the case of a right lateral fault, if uh, I'm standing here and Reese Witherspoon is over here, She's moving to my right when the fault moves, and likewise, of course, she'd be looking back at me, so I would be moving to her right in the movement of this fault. And for those of you with no sense of humor, I'm obviously joking. Um, but that is your crash course in faults. So hopefully this helps, 
and uh, make sure to ask questions in class.